Coming to you live from Pinades Studios, a Bad Year Records production. I am Sasha St. Evick. With me is my co-host, Brian O'Hawk. Brian O'Hawk, how are you doing today? All right. Doing good? Yeah. So it's finally happened, you know. What? The, the thing we've been waiting for for a good decade now, American Isle, is finally coming to an end. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's true. I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't think I was ever going to see this day in my lifetime, and I'm really glad that I, I can live to tell about it. I've never been a fan of the t- singing competitions, and I know a lot of people, I know it's popular for a lot of people sort of to crap all over popular things, but it's really not why I've, I was never a fan of it. I wasn't a fan of it back when it started when I was in high school. I'm not a fan of it now. I don't like the makeup of it. I don't like the sort of the formula that it follows. I don't like the way it sort of is set up, and I don't like sort of the message that it uh, presents out there. As far as the music industry, as well as uh, how you get into it and all everything that goes along with that, and I'm sure we'll have an interesting conversation going into this. But I'll just, you know, first I'd like to, you know, get your impression of it. W- what do you generally think? Like, just a quick synopsis if you can give me. Like, what do you? Because I know you probably have opinions on it too. Uh, what do you just? Feel, how do you feel about singing competitions? They rise. The fact that they've become so popular these days. Because I mean, American Idol might be stopping because. The ratings aren't that good, but there are so many others, and they're still they're still around, and they don't look like they're slowing down. So, just what's your general impression of these sort of? Yeah, things? um, the uh, like talent show type thing, basically. You know, I think it's kind of messed up the way they they do them and the format of them. I mean, yeah, they were okay at the beginning, I suppose. I mean, I never really liked American Idol; it was kind of nasty and stupid, but uh. I don't know. It's just I think that talent shows, in a sense, that because they make as much money as they do, they're not going to really go away. I mean, American Idol is going away because of the the uh, you know ratings have gone down, mm-hmm. people are losing interest in it, and I guess people are finally feeling bad that they show so many losers <laughs> on that damn thing. There's like bad people, and only the good people get like a few seconds, and you know whatever, they make it on. Mm-hmm. But the they show way more people that are horrible, and people make fun of it. And I think people are finally realizing they're saying oh, that's just wrong. Well, the uh, it's since it began, like since the first season, like just focusing on American Idol right now, people watch the auditions. That's why I think the ratings were always the highest in the auditions because they want to see the people that they know just suck. They want to laugh at them. They want to make fun of them, and they want to watch that dipshit Simon Cowell. You know. Rub his man, middle-aged man boobs, and so speaking his posh British accent. That was absolutely horrible. Like, okay, yeah, I get it. Like they suck, but they focus so much more on that. So, because for a competition that builds itself as like it's about singing, it's about bringing you the best of the best, the next American Idol. You know, and then you know, in Britain before that, a uh, pop idol, or and all the various incarnations around the country. Here it's like they want to show you the next American Idol, the next superstar, the next person that's gonna be able to you know capture your heart musically. But the first episode, two episodes, three episodes, all they're showing is like, well, wow, check out all these people that suck. Ha ha ha! Don't they suck? Don't yeah. you want to laugh at how much they suck? Yeah, Don't you want to like just turn your nose up at them and be glad you're not them? And look, I know why those people show up. A lot of people are like, why do they? Why are they even there if they suck? First of all, they probably they might be a little bit deluded. Second of all, for the fame, like, and that's mainly what this is about. Like, you want your 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. Like you want a quick launch into stardom. You know, like I'm sure many of them are talented. I mean, yeah, many of them are talented, but many of them are, you know, interested in getting into the music business. But these shows give them a quick uh, sort of peek through the curtain, you know, like as far as paying your dues goes, if that's to be mean anything. Like and many of them did try, you know, to release lay records before that, but they don't really ever, they don't go anywhere. So like, hey, I'm going to go on uh, American Idol. I'm going to go on yeah. The Voice. I'm going to go on America's Got Talent, yeah. whatever. And then, you know, like that's going to... Yeah, X-Factor. Gonna, yeah, kind of X-Factor. Oh, good Another Simon Cowell uh, <laughs> baby there. That guy's like responsible for all the crap, all the trash TV that's come, come to you in like the last 10 years. It's just, I, I'm holding in my... Uh, I'm probably going to go on a rant at some point about him, but we'll 
I'll, I'll let I'll stew on it, and then I'll just let the lid <laughs> pop at some point. But look, my main issue with these sort of things is like you could say like, as far as the talent goes, you know, like a, a it's sensationalization for some. You can see by the way that they mock and degrade the people that are, that audition for the yeah. show, the ones who might not be as good. And I'm going to be honest, there were times when I saw them and they're like, well, that was awful. But I was like, eh. <laughs> like, yeah, they were I, meh. That's, and then that's... people who they let do it, like, oh, that was wonderful. I am moved. I'm, I'm thinking like, again, meh. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, the thing is, care. it's 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 hard to say what they're going off of, you know? Right. Like, I, you know, being that I am a musician, I do kind of see, you know, singing and music talents a slightly different way than uh, I guess some people do. But what they do, and uh, like on American Idol and stuff like that, I do not understand the reactions they do give. Right. I mean, like you're saying, some of the talents, yeah, they're you know good at what they're doing. They sound good, and the you know the judges are just like, nah, that sucked or that wasn't good. I'm sitting there like, well, what the hell are you hearing? I mean, it sounded perfectly fine to me. I mean, I get the, the impression like, like like the the famous words that uh, what is it, the uh, Randy or whatever says, you know, little pitchy. sound a little pitchy, dog. <laughs> little pitchy like, dog. yeah, they may be slightly pitchy, but I mean, compared to some of the other people, they're you know perfectly fine. It's the acoustic, man. It's the acoustics yeah. in the place, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, but that's just thing. I always feel like uh, I get the impression that uh, there's a producer actually in their ear. At some, like I know for a fact that by the end, like Sam Cowell, that he was told, "Hey, people really like it when you insult people. Keep doing it." Like every yeah. time you go, and uh, so his insults got more and more bizarre and more. And I, they were scripted, I'm sure, and written. But he probably had like a whole list of things that he went through, one-liners and things like that. Because you know, you could tell he's like using like zingers <laughs> at one point. Yeah. But uh, as far as I go, I think they already knew sort of just by the look of the person. Hey, who can we sell to America? And everybody has a soft story to tell. Yeah. I grew up, you know, I grew up in, you know, like this small little town. I was a nobody. I was this. I was that. Never thought I could be on a show like this. Thank you, American Idol. Thank you, Fox Network, for giving me this opportunity and for, you know, signing myself to you. Yeah. Now I am somebody. Don't you want to be just like this person? Didn't you grow up in a small town too? Aren't you a nobody? You can be somebody. You can have America looking at you, judging you, and voting for you if they like you. But you better have a good story to sell them. Yeah. Uh, but that's just how all it all, you know, how it all is for like any sort of thing, you know. But it gives a bad the, the impression of, of music. It's just or television music. in general. It's not just, uh, you right, know, right, the, right. the talent shows and stuff. True. But channel. Uh, television in general wants to give you a sob story to, so you can, you know, attach to it and then they try to make money off of it. So really, you know, it doesn't matter if it's talent shows or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's television in general does that. But talent shows like American Idol and X Factor and, you know, the oh. voice or whatever it is and all that other stuff, they do have a ridiculous amount of crap that is done to, you know, try to get you to buy into their story you know yeah. i mean like when american idols first started mm -hmm. i do believe that the people that did go on there generally wanted to be there to get something to do with the music mm -hmm. get it get a uh you know contract or whatever it is done they you know fairly were decent at what you know some of them were fairly decent at what they're doing right. and stuff and you know the later it got you know the further down the years American Idol and stuff like that got people just wanted to get on TV to get on TV you know they didn't care they're like oh yeah I know I suck but I'm gonna pretend like I'm the greatest thing ever and I'm gonna you know be a song try to, try to be my 15 minutes of fame and that's what it is so people got more, more I think outrageous, yeah. I think what happened is if or what they should have done was when that started to happen they say you know what we're done you know find another means <laughs> you know to to try to get this thing done or change the format or whatever but yeah, it, it it you know doesn't help their their pockets if they do that. Of course not. It, it doesn't really matter to them what they were putting out by the end of it. And let's just go off the assumption that the people who actually get on the computer, something about the way it's picked, they're like America chooses. Well, America chooses like the last fourteen or so, fourteen to twenty that. Are, 
the judges and the producers and the hosts thought were good enough to come on the show. You don't pick out of the 800 to 1,000 people who auditioned. And like they sort of reduce the people, they would de- force your selection. Like these are the people that we like and the style of music that appeals to us, you know, as a handful of individuals who got to hear it first. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, if you and I were judging this as like a rock <laughs> crowd, all the pop singers probably wouldn't, or a good chunk of them, you know, I'm not saying like I, I would discriminate against them, but we would probably pick people who have a bit more of an edgier tone, people who have a bit more of a harsher tone, maybe people who are, don't have a perfect voice, but there's something of interest there, which they didn't seem to like. So a lot of the kids on there, they had talent. I'm not going to say they don't have talent, but they sort of blend, their voices blended into one another. There wasn't anything really like there that uh, interests me. So, and I don't want to like shit on them. I'm going to say, over like, yes, let's just go on the assumption that they have talent they, and they, uh, they have something to, you know, they have good vocals, good rhythm, all that, uh, you know, because I, I don't want to make it like a pessimistic thing, like they all suck. Yeah, yeah. Blanket statement like that. Sure, they all have talent. Uh, they all deserve to be in the top 15. I know that's not true, but yeah. just well, going uh, as an assumption. I mean, it, it's the thing is like with any TV show or mm-hmm. talent show or any of that, it's not just if they're talented to, you know, at their singing or whatever they're doing, their craft, but you have to have the look, which goes back to one of the earlier episodes mm-hmm. we had, you know, image, the image versus, it versus yeah. the you know, talent. talent. And so, I mean, if you, if you look like you would be something that would mm-hmm. go well on camera, they were nicer to you. Right. You know, yeah, if you happen to have the talent to sound, you, know, you sound well or sing well or whatever, it, yes, it works for you. And it's like, okay, beautiful people get easier way into right, right. music that's, that's or, always the, been that in, or into the movies or whatever it is. And, you know, the people who aren't so, you know, attractive, they have to take different means like hard rock yeah. you know, or heavy metal or stuff. They, they don't care like, what you look like. You don't care it. there. It's like, yeah, you, you're you not the prettiest people <laughs> in but a it, sense. But it's not that they're not pretty. It's just right, uh, it's well, not the cookie cutter pop stuff. They would say that, well, that's why I see it's mimicking actual real life. The reason why, like the way the music industry always was, like it always was like that. It always was like image with leadership. I said there's something more inauthentic about this, even compared to that. So the, it's all, yes, it's entertainment. It's superficial. There's a superficial factor to it. There's a subjective factor to it. There's something though really superficial though about this, the way this is arranged. For one thing, the kids... Even like these kids aren't really displaying their talent all around. They don't write the songs. They perform and mimic songs that are already popular that you might know that you already feel a sense for. Now, not saying many of them couldn't write their own songs, but they don't. That's not what we see. So they sing, let's say, very talented and in great pitch and great rhythm songs that already you've already heard that already appeal to you or don't appeal to you and you're going to judge a lot of the talent based on that and second of all a lot of times in the actual music field when things like that go uh go on uh, you know you see like a artist go get promoted where like just because they have a certain image they'll get pushed by the industry but the selection process still seems more authentic because think of someone like bob dylan who doesn't have a great voice I, I don't think even Bob Dylan, even Bob Dylan <laughs> will tell you he doesn't have a great singing voice. That's why I think so. A lot of his stuff is incoherent. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love yeah. your impression. I'm trying, I'm, I was ready for you to do it. Uh, so a lot, a lot of that would like, he probably would never win this sort of competition. However, in his, because it's his music, because he created it and he produced it and he sort of were, uh, Put it out that you can you feel some level of uh, uh, connectedness to it that you don't feel to these kids because the mimicking songs that you already hate or like and you're going to judge them based on that and even if they do it really talented there's some you feel like there's something missing in that you don't yeah. really see them as musicians you see them as really talented performers in some sense yeah. or really talented you know mimes <laughs> yeah well the thing is like you know you mentioned bob dylan he came in at a time when it was actually slightly easier to get into the entertainment business i mean it's not like it was easy as it is it's never really mm-hmm. been easy but it was easier then because you know your political whatever was 
you know, really looked at as an entertainment thing. And if you're an activist of something, you know, back to the 60s and stuff, which is when he was really prominent, you know, that'd get you heard. And being that he was already going at it and he was already doing his stuff and somewhat in the music business. And then he was really, you know, poetic with all his stuff and is really an mm-hmm. activist against, you know, war and everything else. Right. People fell in love with him. Right. It wasn't that's, that, you know, yeah, that, that's then. Now you can say all you want against the war and politics and stuff like that. And it's just like people don't care anymore. So it is a lot harder in that sense to get in if you're trying to do it that way. You know, like Rage Against the Machine. They're, you know, very political. very political against everything, but they got there because they're, you know, had talent, you know, the uh, Tom Morello, who's a freaking awesome, you know, guitar player in mm-hmm. a sense, doing what he does a lot of times without effects from my understanding, you know, he's really good at what he's doing, helps drive that right. sound. And then you have, uh, what's his name? I can't think of his name right now, but the singer who actually started the whole you know, rap rock type thing. Cause he didn't really sing real you know, rock stuff. And he did very political, uh, poetry yeah. in a sense and well, his stuff, which is more rapping, but you know, they got into it in the business because of their talent that way. But you know, it, it, the talent shows in a sense, don't have anybody who really does that. If there's any sort of like political thing that they want to pull off, they'll be pulled from the air. You know, it's like, oh, we can't do that here or whatever. Right. And so you can't take that approach anymore. Now it's like, oh, well, I have to be cookie cutter or I have to do my own thing and, you know, really force my way into to the business by whoring myself out in a sense. Right. But that goes back to what, uh, what I was trying to get at. You don't know these kids. Like they, they'll give you like a whole performance. They'll give you like a whole little package that they put together going back to, you know, no name town, Nebraska or something, and you'll get to see like pictures of them at homecoming. You're like, oh, well, aren't they nice? But it's, you don't hear their voice in the songs. You don't hear their voice in the music. And the, and the way this is presented, when they show like, well, this is the way you get into the music business. This is the way you sort of uh, reach that level of fame is by simply imitating other things that are popular and just going along with that and sort of presenting yourself to the country in that way. That, that's the way the music industry works. And a lot of kids who might see that, and they might try to emulate that, not by going to the, to the talent competitions, although many of them will try, but they just with the assumption that this is what the music industry is, this is how you make it, you know, first you go in there, and then you do something that sounds already kind of popular, and then you're going to make it through that. They're going to get have a harsh wake-up call <laughs> at some point, and many of them probably have. And even the people who get into these competitions, name the last five winners from any of these shows, like especially something like American Idol, which is probably what's going down, because I mean, like other, I can name, I didn't have to watch the show to be able to name them at the beginning. Like, I know who Kelly Clarkson is. I know who Carrie Underwood is. I can name Daughtry, even though he didn't win. Uh, Ruben Stutter. Nobody knows who Stutter is. <laughs> I think they remember Clay Aiken. One day they remember who even studied. But uh, yes. the only thing I know about Clay Aiken is I can't name a Clay Aiken song. I know he came out at some point, and that's it. <laughs> like yeah. Then the, the uh, went into politics. Yeah, it, uh, politics. Mm-hmm. I think pushed mainly by LGL, uh, GLBT issues. I, I always get those initials confused. I start thinking of like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, <laughs> things <laughs> like that. <laughs> like no, nothing offensive. Go ahead, you know, gay marriage, yeah, you all that. But I'm just saying, y'all, too it, many, it, too it, much alphabet soup. It's a mouthful of letters, really. What too much is. alphabet soup. <laughs> like in my, it just way too, yeah. way too much. In, as far as all that goes, uh, but that's neither here nor there. I'm just going off this, I think it is partially the formula. It come, it becomes formulaic. It shows the most shallow factors in the industry as far as that goes. And it doesn't look real. It doesn't sound real. You know, I don't trust the judge's opinion. I don't think they're being real. A lot of them are using it to sort of rekindle their careers. Yeah. I mean, it was like a lot of these judges. It's like people you either never heard of or people you haven't heard of in a couple of years. Yeah, well, that's the thing is, I mean, yeah, it's either they're failures or not necessarily failures, but they're not in their business. Off the way, though. Yeah, they're not in their business anymore, you know, what they were doing and stuff like that, like Paula Abdul. She was big in in music in a sense for singing, and she was choreographer, you know, chore choreographer or whatever choreographer. choreographer, That's the word. Uh, Spell it out. Sound it out. Yeah, Uh, but you know, she was known to do that and help out, you know, other Mm -hmm. artists and stuff like that. And you didn't really hear about her until 
American Idol had started up. Randy Jackson like, oh, was behind hey. the scenes when Yeah, she's like, oh, hey, they, you know, the, she's back. You know, whatever. Randy Jackson was just doing his thing behind the scenes trying to, you know, you know, produce artists and whatever else. And Simon Cowell was whoring himself out in Britain or something. I don't really know. I really have no clue who the hell he is. Or what the hell he does. I'm, I, I, I'm going on a little tangent for that fact that, I mean, yeah, I know who he is now because mm-hmm. it's, you know, he's kind of shoved down my throat. You know, Simon Cowell, the mean British guy. But before that, Who's I was like, asshole? who the hell is this guy? You know, I had to hear news reports or whatever. It's like, oh, well, he's from, you know, blah, blah, blah. He did the X Factor in Britain and he, whatever else. He was a other, than, other than that. I have no freaking clue who the hell this guy is. Well, who's this British asshole who freaking tears down, you know, people's dreams, you know, dreams and stuff. And, you know, he has nothing to do from my understanding or, you know, at that point to do with, with the music business, you know, it's just until after, well, uh, he know, after actually good. you told me some of the stuff mm-hmm. that he, he, he produced or he, you know, mm-hmm. got got into like the Teletubbies and Power Rangers. I was like, oh, so he has somewhat to do with something entertainment. But I, other than that, I have no clue what the hell he's done. Dad, you know? uh, Dad brings up another question. Like, as far as like judgment goes, usually when you have judgment, you imagine. I mean, America's Got Talent. One of the judges on there was Pierce Morgan, one of the original, back when it first got started. Yeah, America's Got. That's another guy. I mean, I mean, I mean, no, I mean he he's a British tabloidy. I can't even call him a news reporter. He he was, a, but he was a like a commentator a guy. Yeah, he, he's like the, people didn't really. People thought he was a little shit yeah, over he's, there. He's like a makeshift Simon Cowell, right? At, That's what that, I got on, from on American that first got season down. when he was there. Yeah, he was the asshole British guy because Americans like to get their, uh, you know, douchebaggery with an accent <laughs> like that. Yeah. They, they find that appealing. They think it's somehow classier or more clever. Yeah. No offense to Americans, but that seems to be the main appeal. I think it was like it was some guy with a Brooklyn accent doing the same stuff. America was like, gee, what a jerk. I hope the show fails. But yeah. look, just going off of some of the Simon Cowell again, because we can't stress this, our, our dislike of him, because he pers- personifies <laughs> what's wrong with this. Look, he did stuff in. I guess music industry in a way. He did, did he do something where you're gonna be like, wow, that's great, that's really respectable? No, he sort of latched on anything that he could. Uh, he got a job in EMI first because his father worked in EMI. Then he latched on and tried to do something on his own. It failed. It went bankrupt. It, he failed horribly. Then he hoard himself out to whatever he could. Teletubbies, Power Rangers, WWF, and then he slowly won that. He got into the latched himself onto the pop craze in the 90s, and that's sort of how he got caught back up. You know, like uh, he became prominent through that in England. And then Pop Idol came on in Britain, and he got a reputation there as the asshole judge, and then they took him into American Idol when they made the American version a year later, and, you know, the rest is history. Yeah. But just going on that, you're like, you got to sit back, and people were going like, well, you guys sound like you're kind of butthurt about him. It's not that. It's who is he to, why is he credible enough what are his credentials to sit in that chair and say, you're good, you're bad, you yeah. suck, you should go on, we should be buying your album, not your album. Because, yeah. uh, I mean, like, yes, I know somebody has to judge it, somebody, it, 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 that's how the process they has to move. Yeah. I think the process is shit, though. I think it's a shitty process. That's part of the re- reason why I don't like it. But if there is to be somebody, who, how do they pick who are these people doing? Like, yeah. him? Well, Him who will who will tell you to like to sell out to whatever you can to make a yeah, buck? Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, I mean, going on just to to, to uh, talent shows and stuff, there are some out there or were. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't know if they're still on or not, since I haven't really seen them in a while. But there were some talent shows out there that you know the judges are actually in the music business. They're part of the talent. You know, like the uh, was it the sing off or whatever it was, where like Pentatonix really got mm-hmm. known, things like that. Uh, they you know acapella groups and stuff. It has like you know one of the guys from Boys and Men, Ben Folds from Ben Folds Five, and uh, uh, Sarah Bareilles. They're all working artists. They're there. They didn't just like oh well you sucked. It's like okay cool you know to, let me give you some of my ideas and my throw my expertise in the music business and actual talent mm-hmm. and help you guys out. And we'll, we're gonna you know challenge you with a song and see what you guys can do. I actually liked that format. Mm-hmm. I liked watching that. I didn't watch it very much, but I did like what I saw. 
I mean, yeah, being that I didn't see it all, there could have been part or times or an right. asshole judge there. I don't know. But what I did see is artists were actually giving the, you know, their talent, mm -hmm. you know, reputable you know, information because that's what they're doing. Same thing for like, you know, the voice. Carson Daly's the host. He doesn't do anything else but host it. Mm -hmm. The judges well, I see are, Carson. yeah, the judges are actual musicians. You know, it hasn't been some person who's like a music producer or just some, some of nobody. It's been, you know, you know, was it Pharrell Williams and, you know, Christina Aguilera and Blake Shelton and all them people who've been in the music business and they do coach them and they do stuff like that, which I think is kind of cool, but also kind of like, well, if, if I'm a, you know, rock artist, I, that's what I do. I like to do stuff. And the only judge that turned around for me was Blake Shelton. I'd be like, well, country is, what advice it, would he close, give you and you as you it, It's close enough to, to rock. Cause they do use some of that rhythm and blues yeah, and right. stuff. And it's like, okay, well, I can take some of your stuff. But if it was Christina Aguilera or whatever, and be like, you're a pop artist. I, I I don't know what you can help me with. You can bring in our people and try to help me out, but you're not really going to give me that idea, you know, of, of what I'm trying to do. And so, you know, that format alone is kind of messed up in a sense, but it also has someone in the music business telling, yeah. hey, well, this is, you might want to try this, you might want to try that, or whatever. Well, I mean, you know? it, it is limited in a variety that you get. I mean, even like uh, we mentioned rock, like you're not going to see much of a hard, you're not going to see like anyone like doing, you know, hard hip hop either on there. Like they wouldn't, they, they won't make it to American now because what did they have like genre shows in which you have to start? Okay. Now we're all going to sing a Michael Jackson song this week. This week we're all going to pick a disco song. And this week we're all going to like, they're like, you have to be able to sing every genre. What musician sings every single genre on yeah. the planet? And it's all pretty much like, Pop, John. They're, they're all covered under pop, pop in the uh, strictest sense of the word, popular music. Yeah. Uh, what artist does that? Like, how is that? Again, you don't then get a feel for who these people are. What's the interest? What's their range, actually? Because you're like, oh, wow, they sound like kind of awful singing a Bee Gees song. Well, yeah, yeah why would they ever sing a Bee Gees song on their own CD when it ever comes out? Who who in the last 30 years, other than the Bee Gees themselves, has sung like the Bee Gees? <laughs> like it doesn't, like it's not yeah. material to the conversation at all. Yeah. It, it's not how it works. Like it, it's just not. It gives a false name for entertainment, but a lot of people will sort of stake their money on, like, no, 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 this is how it works. And you mentioned like the judges, like as far as like they coach them. A lot of times, though, it becomes more about the personality of the judges. They're telling you, I sing this way, you should sing that way. Yeah. Well, what if it doesn't work for me? Yeah. What if, what if your range, like if Chris, Christina Aguilera tells me, like, okay, you sing in this range. Like, yeah, okay, you and I have different voices and different limitations and different capabilities. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> like, maybe, maybe yeah, like, yeah, it yeah. might work for you to go, you know, like in that note. Maybe I want to try it in this other note. I think it might sound better. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love me, what are you going to argue with them? But a lot of yeah, us just sort of take whatever they're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's like the great sage, like they're sitting up there in like the freaking like Indian position, like the loafer, loafer's position, the, you know what I'm talking about, like the, the Indian Indian, like sitting up on a mountain, like the great yeah, wise yeah, yeah, guru yeah. telling you, like, this is how it is. Yeah. And many of them haven't had a popular hit song in like five to ten years. Yeah. <laughs> and they're telling well, you it is. Yeah, man, that's the thing is, yeah, with, with uh, most of the stuff like American Idol and stuff, stuff like that, yeah. They didn't have anything happen in the past couple of years, five, ten years or whatever. And, you know, they're sitting there ju judging you and they don't really tell you much. They're just like, okay, this is the song you're going to be doing. And that's basically it, you know. And it's like with The Voice, yeah, they some of them are, they're actually still current. Not some of them, but all of them are still current in the music business. They're still, you know, doing stuff. They're not just like, oh, yeah, I did this ten years ago. My last album cut that mm -hmm. you know top 100 you know in 1946 you know <laughs> you know stuff like that it was real rough back then <laughs> but i mean you know it's they're actually still there and yeah they they kind of know the difference and change right, music and stuff like that and whatever but and, but yeah it, it, you can get stuck with in those in those talent shows you if you ever did it you can get stuck with something that you know physically you can't do in your vocal range or whatever and they're like, oh, well, if you do this here, this is going to help you out. But I don't think they ever really like, okay, well, you know, you don't ever sing in falsetto. You can't sing in falsetto. I want you to sing in falsetto. It's not the next song. I'm like, it's impossible for you because you can't, you know. Right. If you sing I like did. Barry White, 
good luck. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, again, like it also, and it goes like, a, it ignores the reason why we like certain songs by certain artists. Think of like uh, Queen, the show must go on. Like Freddie Mercury, this was like the last song he recorded like a few weeks before his, de- his death. You can feel the energy and you can feel sort of, uh, in like I'm going to give it my all. And he did it in one shot, one recording. When one of the contestants sings it, it doesn't have any of that meaning to it. They're just yeah. trying to, they're trying to do what he did. But what he did, even, you know, like I think it sounds great. It's one of my favorite songs. But even if it w- didn't sound all that great, I would still probably have the same sentimental feeling for it. I don't have these kids, even if they sound perfect, I'm still like, meh. Yeah, okay. they're a little off. Like, There's a little something that's just not, you know, the same emotion. And as far as like the advice that the that they give them, like, because this supposed to be like they're kind of coaching them along like every step of it, not just when they want to one with them with the judges, but the advice that they give them is, when I started paying attention to what they're actually saying, it starts getting repetitive from week to week to week. Like if you actually like listen to what they're saying, they're kind of saying the same thing every single time in different ways. To which I, and like, and all the kids have to sort of nod along, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And a lot of times they don't really do what they're told anyway, because I think they know, I think yeah. they've done, they're like, okay, I'm gonna do it my way no matter what, but I'm just gonna nod along and pretend that you're like this great sage and they're speaking to me. Uh, but I think that's probably because they, they first were the plane to the camera. Second, how much advice are you going to you know, don't sing badly? <laughs> like, what's the great advice you're going to give me? Like, that's essentially what it all comes down to. They use different words, but it comes yeah. down to yeah. don't sound bad, sing in a way that's going to make you sound good. I mean, yeah. that's pretty much if you translate all the jargon, that's what they're saying. You have to sing in a way that's going to make you sound, oh, gee, thanks. You know, I didn't know that coming into this competition. I have to sound good. I'm supposed to sound good in music? Is that how that's supposed to work? Yeah. Like, uh, of course, so you're like, well, what is the point of these sessions? Yeah. And which brings me to, you know, like, uh, I guess this will be kind of our closing point. Do you think that this format could have been beneficial? And like when it first began? Or do you think it's just something that's way too far out there? Like, it's just, it's just the format and the way it works on its own is just not it's not some a way yeah. that you should be introduced into the yeah, music. Yeah. Well, I mean, field. yeah, there, there was a one, I don't know, talent show that popped up. I don't even think it lasted very long, maybe a show or two that did kind of try to change the format and it fell out because it didn't have the same format, you know? And so, yeah, I think the the format that is out there for the talent shows in a sense of like singing talent shows is pretty much what we've ta- been talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, it has been the same thing over and over and over. And I'm amazed people haven't been, like sick of it for the last like 10 years in well, a sense. American Idol is going down. Yeah, American Idol is going down because of ratings and stuff, but that's because there's the voice and there's so many other things popping yeah. up. And so, you know, I think it should be, you know, a ghastly thing that's like, oh, here's another one. Oh, crap. You know, and, and since it's still making something money, something will take American Idol's spot, of course, from yeah. Fox. Like, that's not something. Yeah. But I mean, that's just, I think the the format that they had is need to be changed or just get rid of it and get rid of all singing competition type of, you know, in a, shows. In a, in a perfect world. Yeah. Where we get to be overlords. <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah, we, we can make it work that way. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I'm just saying like, I think it was doomed to failure from the beginning. Yeah. Like it's just, it, it just isn't a ideal way to go. So and look for the people who have benefited from this, who, who would say that, hey, I enjoyed my time. I thought it was a, a beneficial experience for me. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, from looking into it and also hearing from some of the people who competed in there and all the gripes that they have with it, yeah, I'm, I, I'm gonna stick with my opinion and I think that overall it's uh, a net negative yeah. effect yeah. That, 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 that these competitions have. and. Uh, now that American Idol is going down, I'm glad to see it go down. Yeah. <laughs> like a, a sort it, of it's a, the, the thing I, I wanted to uh, uh, point out or clarify, mm-hmm. I guess, is, you know, if, if whoever listens to this stuff, I don't want them to think it's like, oh, well, it's just a bunch of people grabbing because they're not good enough to be on that stuff. Right. I mean, I probably pers- wouldn't get on personally, <laughs> I don't think I'm good enough to be on it, but that has nothing to do with it. It's right. I don't agree with the format. I don't really think that it's something I would try to go through. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to be something in the music business, I'm going to do it the long way, work hard, and 
hopefully get lucky because that's what it is. It's, it's not a lot of it's about it, luck. It, it's it's not you know oh yeah I, I went to four different talent show things and I finally got hit by one you know and look and it works the other way too. You're like yeah I went to you know this talent show and they completely crapped all over me and now I don't want to have anything to do with music. Yeah, like I don't want them. I don't want the contestants who came on there and they maybe they had a bit of a different sound that the judges didn't think is marketable. Yeah. Like, I don't want, I I hate to the idea that that person then uh, went home and said, okay, well, I don't want to have anything to do with this. Like, okay, okay, well, you know what? You stick with your garage band, you know, you're going to suck <laughs> a little bit, but yeah, you never know. You might, you might, uh, your, your sucky sound might eventually find an audience. Yeah. I mean, I think we should, as, as people who want to be in the music business, go f- the hard way, you know? It, it sucks, but the long way is going to be the better way when you end up, if you ever get it son, uh, signed or whatever, you ever make it, you'd be like, you know what? I worked my ass off. I got to where I was because I worked my ass off. And, you know, that's that, you know, and I didn't show up on some little pop show and be like, oh, yay, now I'm famous. Which might hurt you. <laughs> and also, uh, if you if you never make it that high, the fall down will be so much shorter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, okay, uh, I guess we're going to leave. I guess we the, have we set up piece on yeah, this. Yeah, so are we going to have to revisit? We're so. going to have to revisit this maybe in six months' time when whatever pops up after American Idol. Yeah, Al. yeah. I think but, we, uh, we'll, 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 we'll stay continue this stay later tu- on. But yeah. stay tuned to that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> All right, do you, you guys have a good one then. All right, guys. See you.